our first two speakers today because they actually make search work with their bare hands. I just talk about it, they do it. Um, uh, and Charlie's gonna take us down an e-commerce route, which I think has really come up in importance as we realize how dependent we are on, uh, on remote shopping as well as remote working. And uh, Charlie, this lovely virtual audience is all yours. Thank you, Martin, and thank you for your kind introduction. And thank you everybody for coming along to listen to me. So um, I'm going to be talking today about e-commerce search, as, as Martin uh, introduced me to. Um, just a little bit of background about me, I'll keep this brief. Um, so I've been in the search business for uh, around 20 years now. I started at uh, Muscat with Dr. Martin Porter of STEMA fame a long time ago. And subsequent to that, I founded a search consultancy called Flax. Uh, we merged with our US partners, Open Source Connections, back in um, early 2019. Um, and I act as a managing consultant, Open Source Connections. Uh, so I, I run some projects. I do a lot of our uh, outreach work and community work. And I'm a, I'm a big open source fan. Um, I like uh, attending and running events and speaking at events. Uh, I write a lot about search. And I talk a lot about search. I co-authored the book Searching the Enterprise with a certain uh, Mr. Krushwitz, who is here with us. Um, I'm also a founding member of the Search Network, which I would encourage you to check out. It's a gathering of independent search professionals. We try and re write reports and publish things to counter some of the uh, some of the interesting ideas of some of the, of the big analysts on search. Which uh... um, so open source connections. Um, mainly based in the USA, but we have now a UK office and we're moving into Europe. Uh, our mission as a com company is empowering the world's search teams. And what does that actually mean? Well, we think uh, if we can support uh, the search teams in various companies, we, we can help them build better search. Uh, we mainly concentrate on the Elasticsearch and Solar Stack, so the open source uh, search engines. Uh, we do consultancy, we do training, um, we have various public trainings that run all the time. Um, we work for a lot of different people uh, in the UK, NHS Wales, um, uh, and I've worked for a lot of other organisations like uh, Historic England and uh, <clears throat> the News Group and the Financial Times. Um, in the US we've worked with uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, um, clothing retailer Under Armour. Um, we also run the Haystack Conference, uh, which is runs usually twice a year, once in the US, once in the uh, EU. Currently, we're running weekly, or sorry, bi-weekly meetups uh, to keep people going in these strange times. Uh, lots of talks about search and relevance. So if you want to jump to that website, uh, do come and join our meetup. We also have a Slack group, which has now currently over a, th um, a thousand members all talking about search and relevance. And you'll also be very welcome to join that. It's all free. Uh, pushing information out to the community and getting people to all learn from their peers and from each other is, is really key to what we do and key to, key to our mission of empowerment. So let's move a less, less about us and me. Let's move on to the meat of the talk. E-commerce search is broken. It is. It's terrible. It's awful. I've been doing search long enough that actually I can break, mo break most people's search engines in about five minutes. So I'm going to attempt to do that today just to um, illustrate this problem. So if I just exit my uh, presentation now, if I can make this work, um, I'm going to go and find a website of a certain large supermarket. Uh, can everybody see that still? Right. Can you see the Sainsbury's website? Great. So let's uh, let, let's try some some searches on Sainsbury's. Now I suspect Sainsbury's probably would like their search engine to work, but let's have a go at breaking it. So we're going to look at white sugar. Um, I make a lot of jams, so I, I buy lots of white sugar. Um, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. We got white, lots of different kinds of white sugar coming back. That all makes sense. Uh, just going to scroll down. Hang on, white icing. That's not white sugar. Golden sugar. That's not white sugar. Um, high juice, white grape and peach, no added sugar. That's not white sugar either. Chewing gum. So as you can see quite quickly, I've illustrated that we're not getting relevant results. We're getting some at the top, fair enough, but the stuff down the bottom is pretty terrible. Um, Let's try something else. Now, um, 
I'm quite good at spelling, but not everyone is. And and perhaps if you're, you know, English is your, not your first language, you might have some trouble with this as well. But I've heard of this thing you do to make coffee and, and it's a cafeteria or something like that. So I'm going to type in that. Now, cleverly, Sainsbury's website has has realised I've typed in something wrong and it said they couldn't find cafeteria, but they've, they've got a cafeteria. Interestingly, there's only one of them. Now, that's quite strange because I suspect they probably sell more than one type of cafetiere. So why is it only given me one? Now, OK, another thing you might call a cafetiere is, a, is a, a coffee maker. So let's try coffee maker. Yeah, we've got coffee makers, but no cafetieres. And aren't cafetieres a way of making coffee? So why is it only giving me these things? So OK, I'll, I'll ask my friend how to spell cafetiere. So I know how to spell uh, cafetiere. Always oh, giving me a little suggestion. Brilliant. I can use that. Cafetiere. And so not only, hang on, why is it giving me coffee? I didn't ask for coffee. I wanted the cafetiere. So we got cafetieres. Fair enough. I thought they only sold one cafetiere. What's going on here? And, and, and why have I got different results to the coffee maker? Because these you make coffee with these things, don't you? So I think you're getting the point here. I can quite easily break Sainsbury's search engine. Now let's try something else. Let's go into the Gap website um, for all you fashion conscious search engineers out there. We're going to look at um, some things in here. So Gap, so let's let's try um, white shirt. I'm going to try and look smart. Let's try and find a white shirt from Gap. Hang on, one of them is blue, got blue stripes on them. So that, that, that's not a white shirt. Um, some of them white, yeah, they're, they're pretty white, most of them. That's definitely not white, that striped modern boat net t-shirt. Um, there's a green one. So yeah, this isn't good either. Okay, I'm, I'm right. Well, what I don't want is these ones with stripes. I hate, I hate shirts with, uh, with stripes. So I'm going to try and find a shirt that doesn't have stripes. Um, I don't want to wear one with stripes. So let's try that. Well, they've not got stripes, but is that really it? They've only got two t-shirts, two shirts that haven't got stripes on. Okay. So I, 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 I guess I proved my point. Um, I don't think that this is this is great, and I don't think we're getting really great results from these two leading e-commerce websites. So let's go back to the now. Really, in 2020, after decades of search development, we can't do e-commerce search properly. Even the biggest companies can't do it properly. And also, it's vital now. People are stuck in their houses. People are ordering online. So really, do we think this is an option? Not getting this right. Um, so what I've, I've been working on the last few months is I've actually worked on a, a, a kind of test yourself guide, and, and this is available off our website. It's basically a little uh, way for people to test their websites and see how bad or how good their e-commerce site search is. And um, uh, you can download this for nothing. And there's a checklist there, and it's, you know, really simple stuff like, you know, can you find the search box? Do you handle misspellings? Is there auto suggest? So it's it, it's um, hopefully something people can use to try and work out if their website search is any good. Um, and interestingly, we've had some we, we've tried this on a few sites and, and pretty much nobody gets a brilliant score. Um, there are some companies that do this really well, but they tend to be in the minority. So why is this actually broken? Uh, one of the problems is a lot of e-commerce platform, uh, e-commerce sites, the web shops, they, they use commercial e-commerce platforms. And these platforms, things like SAB Hybris or um, Magento, they've often built in a search engine of some kind, but they're often not actually search experts. They don't always build it very well. Uh, they don't really give the user a lot of control of how the search engine does its indexing and querying. They don't let you measure how good or bad search is. And actually, the e-commerce platforms care about a lot of different things, you know, how, how, what the stock levels are and things like this, which aren't really down to the user, you know, the users and especially the search. So that's one problem. There's also a bit of a disconnect in a lot of e-commerce businesses where you've got people on the marketing side trying to sell stuff and knowing that actually, you know, this is white sugar and that isn't white sugar. But no one's really told them how the search engine works or give them any tools to try and improve search. The IT department, however, who are running the search engine, they're not really close to the business. They're not experts in sugar or clothing, but it's usually their fault anyway, because hang on, you know, they've installed a search engine, so they should really be able to make it better. And also collecting the issues, the problems, making sure you look at the right ones first is really hard because there's usually a lot of things people complain about the search and the famous hippo, the, high, the highest paid person's opinion, 
uh, is a big problem. And these sites don't necessarily understand their customers. Um, obviously, recognizing query intent, you know, what people were thinking of doing when they were looking for sugar, were they making jam or were they just, you know, seeing what sugar you sold or did they want it for their tea? All these kind of things are a bit hard. Um, and the analytics are often very patchy. And even if you have some clever data scientists, they don't necessarily know what they should be measuring and analyzing from a search perspective. Now, why is this important? Well, better search means better conversions. And in e-commerce, that's what's important. Now, if, you, if you're just saying we don't have any of those things, and maybe it's just because someone's misspelled something or they're not using the same language as you, you're just burning money. You're throwing away potential sales. And good search builds brand loyalty, helps retention. If you know what people are searching for, you can also find out what things maybe you should sell that you're not. What are people looking for this week? They weren't last week, what's changed? I mean, you can probably look at a lot of query logs these years and find a lot of queries for masks. Um, but you know, if you know that stuff, people are looking for things, but you're not providing them, that can perhaps drive your, you know, your, what you're, you're buying to sell people. And you can understand a bit of intent from that maybe. If you get search right, you've got a gateway to lots of really clever things such as personalization, maybe a virtual aisle for each customer, maybe learning to rank machine learning, recommendations, chatbots, all those cool new things we'd like to do. So actually it opens the door to lots of cool new features you could do and, and really make your, your web shop a lot more um, useful to the customer. And if you just look, these are literally just two reports I just found on the internet with 30 seconds searching. Look what's happened to e-commerce. You know, 27.5% of total retail sales this year, and it's it's growing like crazy because of the pandemic. Fr frankly, people who aren't doing e-commerce right are going to be in trouble. I think the example Martin brought up earlier today, um, which is the actually the shop Primark, Primark in the UK did not have a web presence. So when the coronavirus hit, they were in trouble. Just look at their figures. They're pretty terrifying. Another thing is as this great you know, rise in e-commerce is happening, um, you've got the problem that the big boys, Amazon, for example, who are doing this stuff very well, are just going to eat your business. So if you're going to compete at all with people like Amazon, you've got to do e-commerce search properly. So how do we look at Tuning Search? And how do we think we can solve this problem? Well, OSC has a few steps we take when we think about um, improving relevance. Measurement. You want to be able to measure, is your search good or bad? And you can do that by saying, you know, are people clicking on things? What are maybe some experts think of the search results, you know, gathering ratings. You've got to be able to experiment and change things with a search engine configuration and, and again measure the impact of those to try and see if you can improve things on, a, on a, as, as rapidly as you possibly can. So you've got to be able to try new things all the time. You've got to have a constant culture of experimentation. You've got to be able to roll those changes out to, to real online searches as quickly as you can as well. You've got to collaborate. You've got to get those experts, those, those subject matter experts who know what the products are and what the customers want, um, put them together with the search engineers, getting them working together, not fighting each other, which is often what happens. And you've got to be able to access help. You've got to be able to access the community, you know, the Haystack conference, the talks, the YouTubes, the Slack groups, the amount of search expertise there is out there provided by people like us and, and others. Now, what we like to talk about is a relevancy tuning framework. And this comes from a talk by my colleague, Peter Freeds, who did a few years ago at the Haystack Conference. We think you should have an offline search lab. And here you do things like, you know, you try experiments, you do automated testing. You've got some way of rapidly iterating around this cycle and figuring out what things might bear fruit, what things are gonna improve relevance. And once you find things that can improve relevance and you trust they do, you can graduate them to an online situation and you can try things like A-B testing. You can look at clickstream analysis to see what customers are actually doing in response to these new features or these new changes. And again, this goes round, but this is this is a different angle. So the offline kind of feeds uh, the offline kind of feeds the online. We also look at tools and processes for this, ways of doing experiments, working out how how well they're doing, what you know, what benefits they might potentially have, coming up with plans. This is one of our 90-day relevance canvases to try a 90-day business plan for improving search you know, figuring out the kind of experiments you're gonna do and the ways you're, gonna, you're, you're going to measure them. So there's lots of stuff we tend to do with our clients about how to build this offline capability. Now, what's happened is OSC with some other people have thought, well, how are we gonna solve this problem of bad e-commerce search? 
And because I mean, the clue's in the name of the company, we're open source people, we thought, well, maybe we can come out with some open source tools for helping improve e-commerce search. And this is a joint effort. The people involved in this Chorus framework uh, are people like René Kriegler, who's an international expert in e-commerce search based in, in Germany and the UK. He's, he's come to Search Solutions many times, and uh, he also uh, hosts the Mice's e-commerce conference. Uh, we've got Johannes uh, Peter, who works for a big e-commerce company in, Ju in Germany. Uh, Paul, uh, who's a more on the kind of product owner side. And what they've done, they've got together with Eric from uh, OSC and others and come together with this, this course framework and they announced it at the Berlin Buzzwords conference earlier this year. Now, why should we have a tool stack for e-commerce search? Why should we build something in open source code for e-commerce search? Well, there is this strong demand for the tools to be able to optimize search for e-commerce. You need to be able to measure the quality. You need to be able to make changes. And this is often known as um, active search management or search and dicing. And you want to be able to do this quickly. You want to be able to start optimizing search from day one. And there aren't that many tools outside the commercial world for doing this. And the ones in the commercial world aren't brilliant either. The other trouble is open source search engines like Solar or Elasticsearch aren't natively built for e-commerce. The ranking for text is all very well, but in e-commerce, you've often got very short fields with very little text in them. It's highly structured. It's a different kind of angle. We've got to deal with things like variants of a product. We've got different ways of, you know, you might have 20 different sizes of t-shirt, or you might have lots of different colors. Um, there's the whole concept of, of SKUs. If you don't know what a SKU mean, look it, look it up, SKU. Um, and that, that's, that's you know, really where all this centers. We've got to be able to manage things like boosting, redirects, synonyms. And in the search engine world, you do this with configuration files and code. That's difficult for the, the marketing people and the people doing this active search management. So we came up with this idea. This is Chorus. Docker we use to be able to literally be able to drop an image of the entire stack very easily onto a, a server or a, a laptop just to get you started. It kind of helps you deploy the system. Solar is the search engine. We've also built some, some of this stuff for Elasticsearch, not quite as mature as Solar. You've probably all heard, heard of Solar, fantastic open source search engine. Blacklight is an open source front end for, for Solar, so you can very quickly build your website if you haven't got any kind of front end framework. Quirky and Smooey. Now Quirky is a way of creating business rules and embedding them in search. So effectively things like synonyms and boosts, we can build as a set of rules. Now trouble is Quirky is, is driven by a bunch of text files. So Smooey makes it easier to use with a lovely graphical interface, the search management user interface. And then we have Cupid, which is a tool that OSC developed, which is a way of rating search results and gathering the data about how good about a search is. And there's another tool called Rated Ranking Evaluator lets you do massive batch testing. And that is the Chorus framework. It reduces the time to get on par with those commercial e-commerce search engines. It's something hopefully that's packaged and you can deploy very quickly with Elasticsearch or Solar. And it gives you some solutions for some of these things. Tools for those merchandisers or search managers with Smooey or Quirky. Lets you collect judgments with Cupid gets you a, a, a UI up if you need one. There's lots of other things here as well. I and mean, there's, there's even a cra crazy thing called Kerate, which is a way of using genetic algorithms to evolve the best search configuration. But that's maybe for something for the future. Cupid, which is what we built, is a way of collecting judgments. So going to subject matter experts and saying, how good do you think this search result actually is? And we've had this available for quite a while. And I actually, one of the people on, uh, on this conference who so talked in this conference, Nice are uh, actually users of Cupid. They, have, or they certainly were in the past. Lots of people use this. And we used to charge for this. We don't anymore. It's fully open source. Interestingly, we've now got a front end to let Cupid talk to any website front end. So it could talk directly to the front end. And it's a way of gathering judgments. Quirky lets you do embed these business rules. It's a framework for query rewriting. Again, works with Solar Elasticsearch. And this is the sort of thing that Quirky could do. So you can put in synonyms. So for personal computer, PC is a synonym. You can do things like filters. So pretty much if, if someone puts in iPhone, you don't want to get iPhone cases, but you probably want, might want to add, you know, add the word Apple. You can add boosts in a simple way here. So iPhone, it's probably gonna be from Apple. So let's boost up anything that's from Apple. We might be able to want to delete things like take out the word cheap when someone's looking for a cheap iPhone. 
because it's not really relevant, or you might want to use it maybe for some order, ordering or sorting. And it, you can do some really cool things. This is where you can actually take, you know, you can look at, uh, you know, do filters on release dates, or you can take special offer. If someone types in special offer, you can basically work out what that means in terms of particular pricing. So you can do some really complex things. And these are, again, this is a good one. Laptop 15 inch will actually turn it into a filter for screen size between a range. And for a lot of e-commerce, sizes, numerics, um, uh, things like uh, you know, measurements are really important. You can also take words out, things that aren't uh, useful, or you can, I don't know what this means, I don't speak, I think that's Dutch, but um, that, that there's a way of you know, doing quite complicated pro language processing here using this set of rules. And SMUI, of course, makes all of this a lot easier, makes it much easier for you to use. So I'm going to very quickly jump into a demo and show you how some of this stuff works. And basically what I've got is our pretend electronics store. This is Chorus Electronics. We made this up with some open data. This is a pretend electronics store. So you can search for things in here and you can, you know, you can, you can find everything from coffee makers um, to um, patch cables to bits of electronics. It's kind of, you know, it's electro elect electrical electronics goods. So this is running um, on our demo server, but you can see it's got a search engine, it's got facets, it's this, the usual sort of thing. So I'm gonna try a couple of things. So I'm gonna try something, notebook. Now I'm gonna look for notebook. And what the problem is here is we've got what I call the accessories problem. I'm looking for a notebook computer, that's obvious. What's gonna come back? Well, actually, I'm not gonna get notebook, notebook computers at all. I'm gonna get back something a bit different. If this completes. Curse of the demo gods here. Let's try that one more time. Right, there we go. So instead of notebook computers, I've got notebook accessories. Now they all say notebook in the title. So what am I gonna do about that? Well, firstly, I need to go to my experts and get them to tell me how good or bad these results are. So going into, into Cupid here, I can put in the same query notebook. This is, gives me exactly the same set of results. And I'm gonna to go to my expert marketer and say, how good are these results? And they're gonna go, well, that's pretty terrible. That's a battery. Uh, that's a case where it's, it's about notebooks, but it's not what I want, uh, another case. And they can go through all of this and basically put in scores. And we get an aggregate score here using all kinds of different scorers. And so we've not got a brilliant score for this because these results aren't very good. So how can I fix it? Well, I can jump straight into SMUI and I can actually put in a rule here, a notebook. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a rule because I know that actual notebooks have a category field that says they're notebooks. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in a boost uh, if this particular field here, let me see if I can type this right, actually has the product type notebook. So basically when someone types in notebook, I want them to get the things that are actually notebooks at the top. Save those rules, push it up to solar. And let's just quickly jump back into Cupid and run, rerun that test query, see what I got. I've got actual notebooks. And so I now hand it back to my rater and they can go and say, brilliant, brilliant, et cetera, et cetera. And I get a much better score. And if we go back to the actual, site here, my live site. Again, I can rerun the notebook query and that should come up with actual notebook computers. And I can do similar things with synonyms. There we go, actual notebooks. So let's just jump back into my slides now. Now, that's Chorus. It's a totally open source, totally free uh, framework for building a tunable, measurable uh, e-commerce store. But it doesn't do everything. I mean, out of this stuff, we've got some of the offline stuff, you know, we can, we, we've got other tools here for ways of doing the testing, the offline. On the actual, we haven't got anything that hooks into A-B testing. We haven't got any kind of clickstream analytics on. There are packages like Google Analytics, but we want to really try and get better analytics for, for live sites. So there's a lot to be done. Um, and we hope that we'll get other people to join us. We've got a number of um, retailers we're working with, hopefully that will come on as early course adopters. Bits of chorus are already being used in anger. We've got it being used in some, uh, the quirky framework, for example, is used in some very big um, online stores in anger. Cupid's been used by 1500 people. Just putting all the bits together into chorus, that's not something that's used very heavily yet. 
Um, we've got a guide we can you can download to try this. We've actually done a series of blogs and videos explaining how things like solving the accessory problem can be done by our imaginary product owner, Pete, with his Chorus Electronics web store. The code is obviously all open source. Uh, the documentation is on the Quirky website, and that's all free. We're actually been running some free online workshops with uh, um, uh, the Plain Schwartz crew who run Berlin Buzzwords. I've been running this last week, and we're discussing this all on relevant Slack. But we think this is um, a really cool way to, to democratize access to these tools, to make it possible for web shops to make e-commerce better. And frankly, in a lot of cases, it can't get any worse. And we can all learn from each other and share the knowledge and share the, um, share the tools um, open source and build better e-commerce search. Thank you very much. Charlie, thank you very much indeed. Um, anyone who does a demo live on a virtual conference deserves a big vote of applause. That was impressive. Um, one or two uh, questions have come up, uh, not surprisingly. Um, and one from Elaine almost reflects back from this morning, Elaine Tons. And that is, of course, that marketeers call things their way and users have a different view of what it is. Um, you know, I want a screwdriver, but, you know, do I want a real screwdriver or do I want an all electronic one or whatever? So I'm making this up on the fly. The issue is when you do your relevance checking, you're asking the marketeers what's relevant. Do you also have a way of getting what users think is the most relevant? Is that well, presumably the click logs? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, what I'd be doing there is look at is doing some analysis of the query logs to find out what people are actually searching for and maybe what they're looking for what they're matching on and maybe what they're buying as a hint to say what they thought was the answer to their question. Um, I think the marketeers tend to have a much better view of what users call things. Um, you know, they know the difference between a Phillips screwdriver and a cross-head screwdriver and a flatbed screwdriver. Um, they also can use the query logs to figure out how to, how to link those terms that the, the products use uh, back to the, the terms that users are, are searching for. So yeah, it, it's a constant process, but the, the point is, um, I think the marketeers, they know what the business carries and what the answers to those questions might be. So they, they're better posi posi positioned to, to answer those questions than maybe the search people who are looking at this from a very kind of neutral perspective um, and don't necessarily know anything about screwdrivers. Okay, a question from Habib Shafiu. Um, are, if these tools are open source, the question is, are they actively open for contributions or is it just a set, specific set restricted to work on them? No, uh, totally open source. We don't like the kind of uh, the model which some companies have where the code is open, but contributions are very much controlled. Um, we have lots of control. I mean, there, there's about 30 people building Cupid, for example, and um, a, you know, a good number of those are outside open source connections. Um, we, we are welcoming contributions, pull requests, anything you like. We want everyone to jump in and get and get started with this. Um, again, clues in the name. OSC have been doing open source for a long time. And, you know, uh, my colleague Eric is an Apache committer and on the solar project. We're all deeply involved in this world. So we know how to do it right. And, and that, that odd model where people say, well, the code's available, but only the people from my company are allowed to commit to it. I'm not a great fan of that model. Mm. When I look at the enterprise search business, it's usually the IT manager who is sort of the purchaser interface. In your business, Charlie, is it the line of business people that come to you or is it the IT people who come to you? I think it's both. We often get the IT people coming to us, but what we're trying to do with Chorus and all of this stuff is talk to people maybe at the product owner level because they know the problems they face. Um, and even at the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, maybe the kind of CDO or CMO level, where they know search is broken. Uh, they don't really know what that means. Uh, so we're trying to give them the tools to analyze where the broken bits are, prioritize issues, go through the right processes and identify fixes. And it's as much about building process as it is about building code. Mm -hmm. And the final one for this little slot before we give Agnes the, the screen um, from Nigel Hamilton. Do you have plans for an integrated recommendation, recommendations